think, into a deep, deep run, maybe even to a Final Four. Tip in the air and is won by Arizona. T.J. McConnell, the outstanding newcomer from Duquesne, transferring over this year, giving Sean Miller a true point guard to run out there along with Nick Johnson. And then, of course, Gabe York, who actually moved into the starting lineup back on February the 19th against this Utah club. But Arizona beat them in Salt Lake City in overtime. Utah's playing that 2-3, I call it European zone, the way they can shift and play your man. They let guys cut through, and they're going to force Arizona to shoot it, and they do. T.J. McConnell. Utah in the front court, and with it is Brandon Taylor. Nick Johnson will pick up DeLon Wright to start this game. Jordan Leverage, who has struggled shooting against this group in two games, outside of Taylor for three. And the long rebound gathered in by McConnell. Arizona wants to run off those long misses if they can. Johnson fakes and drives, veers to the left. Hard banker with a right hand up and in. And Arizona out on top 4-0. We talked about them setting the tone early in this game as one of the keys. And they're certainly doing that at both ends defensively and with that aggressive offense attack. Leverage 1 of 12 shooting in the last go-around in Utah against Arizona. They swing it up top to Baczynski. Lon right over to Baczynski, drives on Tarzuski, flips it up, is fouled. And Dallin Baczynski will head to the line. Man of that matchup zone to trapping a little bit in the post. They keep you guessing defensively what they're going to do to you. Baczynski's put Utah on the board. 4-2 count in the corner, squaring up is Gabe York. Gordon's putback flip is off. Right on the run with the offhand. Loveridge working on Gordon. That will be a matchup we'll watch closely this afternoon. Right off the top of the screen to Baczynski. Rolling to the hole for the crunch, and we're tied at four. That's a violation. Stepped over the inbound line. Gordon trying to weak side help. They expect you to handle your guy by himself. Any kind of pick and roll action is going to be wide open for Utah. Baczynski setting a solid screen, will get it high post, turns, steps through, powers up over Tarzuski, it's off, McConnell lost it, Baczynski runs it down, and Utah wins the 50-50 ball. Donald Baczynski has come on strong late in the year, starting in his seventh game. On loss, checked by York. York reached and a foul on Gabe York. The drives puts pressure on them to move their feet and defend that one-on-one -on -one action. Princeton on loss, steps out on the wing. Slants in, York can't handle it. Scoops it up with the left hand, it's off. And a foul in pursuit. Team spent eight weeks this season at number one in the country. Miller now in his fifth year at Arizona. He's done a terrific job with this program. You can see again, Utah sits in that 2-3 zone. They match up with you at times. It looks like a man-to-man. -man. Other times they'll switch everything when cutters go through. You really need to attack this with ball movement, player movement. Attacking the inside out, making them rotate defensively. York gets some daylight, launches a three, it's off. Rebound to Gordon. Gordon has the height advantage on on Wash. He'll work the perimeter. They slide it out into the corner and rotate it with 27 to shoot. York another opportunity. This time he cashes in. That was created by a great extra pass by Nick Johnson. Froze the defender with a look. Gave it up to an open teammate. York was three of six from three. And had 15 points in the last meeting between the two clubs. That's, of course, the day that he started. Replacing Brandon Ashley, who had played 22 games prior to the injury. And Ashley is 6'8 wingman. It could do a lot of things for you on the floor. Leverage missing and a long rebound gathered in by Gordon. Arizona playing with three guards, as we mentioned, with Brandon Ashley's injury. They've moved Rondé Hollis Jefferson off to the bench, 6'7 wingman, who brings a lot of energy, and right now he's being summoned off the bench. Arizona 
Leading here 7 4 in the early going. Wachinski's had some success there, and a nice mm. pocket pass inside to the cutter. Princeton on watch for the land. When a team really face guards you man to man, any type of basket cut will give you an opportunity to free up and get an open layup look. Warden left alone, 15 footer away, lands with a thud after it. There's Loveridge saving it in there to Unwas. Right with a hesitation. Boy, he got hammered. Utah to bring it in bounds. 14.50 to play here in the first half. Taylor will swing it and play to right. Utah's had some success earning it driving the basketball. Della Bichinski now out of the lineup. Jeremy Olsen, 6'10 sophomore, is back in. He did a terrific job yesterday against Washington. With some low post offense early in the game. Arizona excellent at switching, trapping. Gordon tries it free from Tucker, races to the glass and puts the hammer down. That was all created by that outstanding pressure defense. Watch the way they close out on the ball. They show their hands. They're good at switching. They don't give you a lot of open looks because they're good enough defensively to switch every way on the floor. Bigs can guard the littles and the littles can guard the bigs. Kari Tucker is in along with Olsen from Utah. Taylor splits a pair. Cross-court pass to Tucker, but a foul. This is going to be a breather. Let's set the lineups for you now with Aaron Gordon. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is in the lineup. T.J. McConnell will bring it out of backcourt. Elliott Pitts, freshman out of Dublin, Ohio, at 6'5", is on the floor. And the veteran, Jordan Mays, senior from Los Angeles, at 6'3", on for Arizona. Both of these teams do a lot of switches. Defensively. McConnell's three is off. Gordon after the rebound, jabbed away and out of You got to play through some tough calls. Greg Nixon, Tony Padilla, Darren White are officials this afternoon. Arizona very patiently, Ernie, looking for an opening. up top trying to loosen things up with a three well he was guarded by Jeremy Olsen I thought he should have shot fake and drove that because Olsen was sagging off of him because of the switching defenses it's going to create matchup problems on the floor for both of these teams Tarzuski from the wing and a loose ball foul called inside this is going to go against Utah and it's on Loveridge on the block out I thought they should let him play first foul on Loveridge and the second team foul on Utah Arizona here in the early going, 4 of 10 shooting. Utah 2 for 6. McConnell, terrific spin, but Olsen tracked him and ripped the ball away in a foul. This will be on Hollis Jefferson as Olsen anticipated. Ripped the ball from him as well. Nice defensive play. Remember, Kevin, we talked about keys to the game. Utah cannot turn the ball over and give Arizona easy buckets, especially the unforced turnovers up top. Right as a driving lane, and a charge is off the ball at taking charge. That's two in the game so far. Look at the rotation of the ball. Mays tees it up. Pitts takes it off the floor as Arizona screened off. In the athletic department on how to win. And they are hot right now. They've won seven of the last ten ball games. Here on the inbounds, McConnell to Gordon. They screen him. He missed the tip. Tarzuski, though, brings down the offensive rebound, the sixth so far in the game. Olsen inside, blocks the shot. And Trajewski reaches in to pick up the cheap foul 90 feet away from the basket. And Alentz in for Utah as they play two bigs out on the floor now. Taylor will control. Arizona leading 9-6. Six offensive rebounds thus far for Arizona. Princeton on Waz. Eight to shoot. Right. Walled off. 
terminates the dribble. Lent steps in, deep jumper off the iron. McConnell the recovery. With Hollis Jefferson, Tarzuski, Johnson and Gordon, here he comes. We're at 11 minutes here in the first half. Tarzuski surveys, tried to step through. Olsen got a piece. Of Kenneth Ogby in the lineup now for Utah. 6'6 freshman from Germany. Along with Dallin Baczynski. Hannah Lentz. And this man, DeLon Wright. Up top looking for three. And that is off. The rebound recovered by McConnell. Running right-hander over traffic. D.J. McConnell. Beautiful right-hander. That was a very... Difficult high. <laughs> Difficult <laughs> shot there. Arizona had been in a drought previous to that, hitting one of their previous eight attempts. Ogbe is trapped at a... Anwas and Wright, along with Baczynski, Lentz. Uh, this is Anwas on the post-up of York. Rebound, Tarzuski. McConnell early offense got into the paint. Creating for Johnson a look at three and he knocked it down. Arizona with their largest lead of the ball game up nine and Utah needs a timeout and listen to the fan. That rebounding margin and then the fact that they only turn the ball over and average it ten times a game. That so far is the best in school history. When I mean, you think about some of the cat teams in the past, 97 national champions have beat Kentucky in overtime. I mean that is saying something. Well, what you're telling me is they win the game within the game. They want all those little things to their advantage. Right wing leverage. He's got to get going. That one an air ball. But Chinsky after it, but saves it to York. Gabe York, early offense. Trzuski right down the shoot for the two-hand jam. Tarzuski packs it, and Arizona leading here by 11. What do we talk about easy baskets? 10-0 run for the Cats. Loveridge has it detached. Tarzuski the pass ahead to York. To the cup and rejected in the air. But we let him play on. Coach Miller stays nice and poised. Didn't get rattled on the sideline. Called his next play because he knows he has a veteran team on the floor right now. Arizona 7 of 17 from the field. The ball movement is crisp. Johnson for three. He hit another one. And Arizona on top. 20 to 6. Utah's not scored a point since the 15-29 mark. They're not only on top, they're on fires. And the reason for that, they've hit their stride. We talked about them setting the tone. I would say, Kevin, they have definitely come out the gate and set the tone. Well, we have suddenly been transported to Tucson, Arizona. This place sounds like the McHale Center into the lane. Ogby has it rejected. Two Johnson on the run. Challenges two defenders and a foul. Involved in this game and get to be a little bit more aggressive offensively. And they need to go on a two-by-two two mentality and claw back into this game and try and get it to single digits sometime in the next five minutes here. Hollis Jefferson picks up on Wash. They swing to Loveridge. And a foul in low. And this is going to go against Baczynski, the illegal. Oregon held their own on the glass, 35-35 against Arizona. I would think, first and foremost, Ernie, you've got to hold your own on the glass. You can ill afford to turn it over. And then, of course, Oregon hit threes in the second half. That's their game. Well, you got to play behind the three-quarter in the post, push them up, but you've got to get bodies. You've got to be accountable and pay attention to detail. Otherwise, they'll just gobble you up. Hollis Jefferson releases. Leverage the rebound. And here comes DeLon Wright. They've done an excellent job on DeLon Wright. Chris Johnson, player of the conference for a reason. He's a terrific two-way player. He's got the assignment on right right now. Anwas power drive laid it in. That's a great move inside. Nick Johnson the other way, threw it away. Cross-court pass, intercepted by Loveridge. See, I don't think they can set up in those situations. They've got to attack because the Arizona's defense is too good. When you get a chance to get out in transition against Arizona. Thank you, Yogi. Arizona leading this game up by 14 but also on the glass 15 5 that would have to be job one for Utah crash the glass on Ross mid block challenged by York who reaches in steals it on Ross got it back no reset nine to shoot 
And Olsen stepped out of bounds. So good at covering down. That doesn't even become an advantage. Their defense has got Utah really frustrated. McConnell, number one in the conference this year, an assist to turnover ratio at 3.02. He doesn't make many mistakes. Nick Johnson. Wallace Jefferson, Tarzuski now with it. Inside, tried to step. When you play an opponent who's not as tough defensively, it allows your offense to click better because you're so used to guarding each other in practice and so tough on each other in practice. This is why Arizona is so good. They're programmed to lock you up and they're programmed to attack your defense. So far, Arizona's taken leverage and right out of any kind of rhythm they've tried to establish. John Wass has been able to get in there a couple of times, but this is off. One and done, Arizona controls the rebounding edge. Johnson has a seam to the cup, and on Wass came over there to get a piece. Good foul by Princeton on Wass, who made a point. So it makes offense very difficult. You've got to be able to break people down off the dribble and go score against a team that can sit on you like that. Yeah, and Utah Ernie is, they've taken right and Loveridge out of the game. The top two scores for Utah have yet to score. They didn't take them out of the game. Arizona took them out of the game. <laughs> Taylor will drive and kick. Tucker for three, knocked it down. That may loosen some things up. Dakari Tucker can shoot the three, a 41 percenter coming into the tournament. That was created with the drive and the kick like you mentioned. McConnell whirl straightens, laying it up and in. Boy, not only can he handle the ball, he can defend all Pac-12 defense, but he can get his own too, can he, Ernie? Wow. Not, not only that, he stuck his tongue out at Brandon Taylor when he did it. <laughs> I like the way he set it up, though. 15-point Arizona League cross-court pass intercepted. Hollis Jefferson spins, lays it home. Rondé Hollis Jefferson from Chester, Pennsylvania, 6'7 freshman, who was moved to the bench to give him a spark. Gabe York moved into the lineup to give him three guards out there when Brandon Ashley went down with an injury, a season ending injury, 22 games into the season. Taylor's pass inside deflected. Gordon comes up with a handle to McConnell, races to the glass and laid it up and in. And Arizona looking to rout Utah here early. 30 to 11 with 4.15 to play in the half. It has become a feeding frenzy for their defense. They're excited, they're happy to defend you because they can get the steals and get out and run and go dunk and get layups and get easy buckets. So it creates a feeding frenzy. Coaches love that. And like you say, Ernie, with this group, they can switch everything. On Wass, tough shot, spinning low left side. Larry Kristoviak up off the Utah bench. He's been up most of this first half. McConnell, pick and roll. Gordon laid it in. Well, it's a frustrating feeling as a coach. Is that not much you can do right now. And it's not so much Utah as it is Arizona. Again, they have set the tempo. They are playing at such a high level. With a foot injury in a game February the 1st at Cal, a game they lost by two. They lost Ashley two minutes into that game. Previous to losing against Oregon in Eugene on Saturday, Arizona had won five in a row since a loss at Arizona State. Those have been their only losses they have sustained this year to go 15 and three in conference. And 28 and three on the year, 18 and 0 at home. DeLon Wright is back in, feeding Jeremy Olsen. Utah badly needing a bucket. Olsen had a good look off the iron. Hollis Jefferson the rebound with Gordon, Johnson, Tarzuski back in, and Gabe York. Utah ran a great play that last time. Arizona defended every single option on the play and took everything away. Gordon cuts through. Good defensive play by Tucker. Got a piece. Ball popped free. Two Utes run into one another. Wright comes away with it. 
They've got to go score here. They cannot afford to set up. Their defense is too good, and they set up again. Anytime they have numbers, they've got to take advantage of that because by setting up, they get locked up with switching, with shot clock running down. The bigs are good enough to switch. They trap you on the ball screens. They do not give you a lot of scoring opportunities. Taylor drives and kicks. Tucker fakes and adjusts. Johnson the rebound, scanning, surveys, great pass, Gordon beneath the rim, the reverse and transition up and in. The vision of Nick Johnson, sensational. You Head on a swivel as he came down the court, Ernie. You notice how Arizona will take advantage of you in transition. Oh, Anytime man. they have numbers, they're coming at you. They want to score out of transition more than they do in the half court. in high gear the Wildcats on a 27 to 7 run right now the line right to bring it in bounds covered by Gordon and Utah's got to use a timeout a timeout coming out at a time Loveridge will bring it in bounds this time Olsen will come to get it in the corner immediately doubled Loveridge and Wright having difficulty right outside for three as the shot clock winds down that ticked the iron into the hands of Gordon Arizona controlling the glass 18 to 6 advantage. Nick Johnson tees up a triple. Olsen with the recovery. Jordan Loveridge has not scored and neither has Delon Wright and between them on the year 31 points per ball game. 15 seconds left in the half. Taylor, pick and roll. Olsen dumps it up, missed it. Tarzewski the rebound, and that will be that. First half in the books. And the 13. You know, people tend to forget that Arizona, they're the sixth best defensive team in the country, holding teams to 58 points a game, but they're, they got those rim protectors. Tarzewski, Gordon on the back line to help out as well. Holding Pac-12 opponents to 39% shooting. On Wass on the inbounds, a three is missed, a long rebound. Nick Johnson. Pick and roll, Tarzewski. And a foul on On Wass. I'm trying to get a feel for Utah. I'm looking into the... An outstanding free throw shooting big man at 77%. Giving Arizona the lead here, 36-13. Taylor can't handle the dribble handoff off his knee out of bounds. And look at the faces again. I, I'm telling you, oh, just go play because they've got the sets on lockdown. You've just got to create some offense just by going to go play the game now. Ahmad Fields has come in now for Utah. The 6'5 freshman out of Washington, D.C. He'll defend Johnson. McConnell. Baseline right. Tarzuski. The drop step. And the high hook up and in. This young fella has improved a great deal since his freshman year. He, for one thing, he's chiseled the body down. You can see the conditioning. Now I'm ready to play the college game. Well, I look in his face, and he was a young man early on. He looks like a full-grown man now. He's got <laughs> poise and toughness about him. Gordon, the rebound, dumps it ahead to Tarzuski. The ball ripped away by Fields. Impossible to stop. The length, the hands, the touch, the feel. He has the total package. Gordon sizes up Fields, kicks to York. York, the hard dribble pull up. That's a cast that goes out of bounds. And last touched. Create and make a basketball play. Big difference when you have that kind of freedom. Boy, they have just gapped off right. No driving lane. Out to Leverage, still trying to score. Missed the three. Rebound of McConnell. And the long rebound allows Arizona to get up the floor with McConnell handling. 
And he turns and shoots an elbow into Taylor. That's an offensive foul. Can that charge? Let's see if they can get something going offensively. Now, again, if they're going to ball screen, it needs to be much higher up the floor. Put everybody on the baseline. Send that big up the ball screen nearly at the half court. And now you can create some penetration and maybe some numbers. Force rotations a little bit more. Man, and Sean Miller still exhorting his group to get down the floor and get the offense initiated. Well, he wants movement. He knows this team has come out. He doesn't want them stagnant. He wants them to stay in attack mode, be the aggressor, get their energy back up. Johnson off the screen, calmly elevates and knocks down the jump shot. Here's Wright. Rejected by Johnson. And out of bounds, Utah ball with 24 to shoot. But Arizona right now playing at a whole different level. 40-13 count, playing at a championship level. See, they're running that pick from sideline to the middle, and Arizona just switches it. They can't get open. They need to run it straight behind. Be straight in the middle of the floor and come at the pick, and that way you can get a guy hung up, and you'll have numbers coming off. Turnover, Utah. Nick Johnson attacks the body of Olsen, kicks to York, sets his feet for three. And a run, rebound run down by Wright. DeLon Wright open floor. Here's that push you talked about, Ernie. They've got to get it going. But Tarzewski's so good at getting down the floor to fill the paint. He's the first guy to greet Wright. Knocked him off balance. And the ball tipped out of bounds. It'll be Utah ball. Well, there's no question about it. And again, they've got to attack sooner. They were too slow again when they had that rebound. They have numbers. They cannot let Arizona set up their defense. Rotations so you can get some drive, kick, swing, shots. Because right now, they're not getting any open looks. Right looking to get off the schneid for this first bucket. He missed it. Leverage the rebound. Powered it right back up. He missed it. And a foul. We'll tell why Arizona is so good in the half court. Now, Nick Johnson is going to get a great pick here right by Gordon, and he's going to come off this pick. And you see again, he elevates up so much quicker than that total points column. People might think, why doesn't Utah press? Why don't they do something to change the tempo of the game? Well, if you press Arizona, what are you going to do? <laughs> Speed them up. When are they at their best? When they play fast. <laughs> And then when you shoot 20%, Arizona controlling the glass, they're running. It's not like they're taking it out of the net. That's well, one other way to slow them. You bet. You're shooting 20%. You're missing a lot of shots. You're giving them a lot of run out opportunities. Terrific inside position held by Hollis Jefferson in the rebound. And Arizona resets. Now watch the way they all spread the floor. And when they come off their ball screen, there's a purpose to it. There's a purpose to it to try to turn the corner and go score. And all of a sudden, they got you with numbers, wide open shots. They're really good at making you bite on something over here and coming back and beating you on the other side of the floor with a wide open jumper or a post up play. McConnell with a three. He's got 11, five of seven shooting. Arizona shooting 50%, four of 11 from beyond the arc. That game is going to be a hard-fought battle. A lot of pressure on Cal to get that win. Colorado's got a win already underneath their belt. It's going to be real interesting to see what Cal team shows up. Are they poised and confident? What Colorado team shows up? Are they content with getting one win and going home? DeLon Wright still has yet to score. Utah's last field goal, Princeton on Waz in the first half of the 347 mark. This is Gabe York for three. You know, and if York is on, and he usually has been, nearly 41% from three in the Pac-12, it opens up so many driving lanes for McConnell and for Johnson, and certainly one-on-one -on -one post play to Tarzewski and then Aaron Gordon. Tucker fouls he went to the rim Arizona has that a young man outstanding player Jordan Mays is pressed down the double team applied on a foul call as Ogby lean Elliot Pitt 6'5 freshman out of Dublin Ohio has had some moments this year he's played now in 18 games this year getting about eight minutes of contest 
you look at this dominated performance by Arizona, you wonder how did Oregon beat this team? Well, with the way they play defense, they played in Oregon's hands because Oregon's guards can break them down and they created scoring opportunity as Trubisky stepped through with the wicked left-handed jam. What power as he went right through the 6-6 Ogby and then the left-hand flush. Tucker in the air. Oh, he changed a pass to a shot through a wild one off the window. Tarzewski the rebound. McConnell looks ahead. At the cup. Helicoptering in above the chin is Rondy Hollis Jefferson. And what a pinpoint pass that was by McConnell. Fifty seventeen the count. Loveridge is tied up. Team defensive team that loves, it's like they enjoy playing the game and enjoy playing with each other. Hard to do in this day and age with young people that wants it to be about them, instant gratification. It's about me, I need mine. This team loves sharing, playing together. Loveridge had it stripped, he was off balance, still without a field goal. Hollis Jefferson looking to pass, knocked down and controlled by Mays. Tarzewski to a cutter, intercepted, but Wright couldn't hold it. Into the hands of Johnson, no reset, Pitts for three. Tucker with a rebound. Up it comes to DeLon Wright. Cross-court whip. He did the drive, that's he again, leverage. His game is either a three or a drive all the way to the hole. He doesn't have a great mid-range game. He needs to take that ball right at Tarzewski then. Wright gets a piece, chasing after it, can't get it. Eric. Incredible record at home. 18 and 1, but this is Arizona. This is a team that seems to be on a mission, has found their stride, and they've only lost three this year. One of them was a loss at Cal when they lost Brandon Ashley two minutes into that game. And Hollis Jefferson teammates. Hollis Jefferson splits a pair, and Ernie, as you so well know, when you lose a key member of your team like Brandon Ashley for the year forces other guys to step up and in a sense it has lengthened their bench Matt Korchak now is in and a foul stops play at 12-01 here of the second half Korchak. over they go back get the wounded geese and they continue flying this Arizona team is spectacular I love Bill that's our Walton moment of the that's afternoon it. I'm done do we have a sponsor for the Walton moment by the way I was not aware of that 11:47 remaining and Nick Johnson handling the step back. Rebound grabbed inside by Kenneth Ogby. Utah in the second half, 0 for 11 from the field. Utah is a kind of club that the NIT, I think, would be highly interested in. Well, in what they have done in conference, 9-9, nine and nine, 21 victories on the year. You know, in, a, in a terrific market. Here's Wright driving into the lane and a f tournament this year. Well, I've seen where they would be, and I'm sure Larry didn't want to talk about this a few days ago, mm -hmm. but they were the number one ranked team in terms of seeding going into the NIT and certainly well-deserved because they will have an opportunity to get all the way to New York and win in NIT when you talk about the personnel of the year. They've just run into a buzzsaw in this game with an Arizona team that's been on a Mitch. Boy, Jordan, that was Aaron Gordon. He was loading up, and Ogby came out of the weeds to deter him. Wright comes down and scores his first bucket of the game at the 10.43 mark here in the second half. Johnson and Jordan along with McConnell, Tarzuski, and Hollis Jefferson on the floor. Gordon wants it on the lob to the cup. Mm. Try to sidestep Pachinski. Hard foul in Gore State. Jahi Carson, I'm sure he's ready to explode. He's already come down at 34 in his building last year. Had a 40-point game against UNLV down here in Vegas, so he likes Vegas. He's a high roller. <laughs> he sure does. Uh, Wash into the lane. It's in. And that's Arizona, UCLA, Oregon, Colorado. Obviously, Arizona State as well, too. And you get an opportunity to see Stanford. You know they're an NCAA team and a potential seventh. How about Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Ernie Kent? 
I thought he's played extremely well. And the good thing about a game like this, it gives a player like Jefferson an opportunity to get his legs moving again, get in a lot of minutes, a lot of time, puts him right into his rhythm. And this is a shortened Arizona bench. People have talked about that's one of the negatives. They don't shoot well. They don't have a lot of depth. Well, let me tell you something. When you know you're going to get your minutes, you get ready to play. And you make the most out of those minutes. So that works to your advantage as well, too. And there's no dissension on the team because they know who's going to play, where the minutes are coming from as well. Motel 6, sixth man of the game, Hollis Jefferson. is. If somebody's going to let you go score, you need to expect to get hit again. That's that mentality in high school where I could go get this done and, and all those things. You're going to get popped at this level coming into yep. the lane. Know it, accept it, take the hit, move on. Good officiating. Greg Nixon calms things down quickly, gets to the athlete, calms him down, admonishes him, and we go back to play. Here's McConnell with it now. 9.33 left in this one. McConnell elevating and hitting him. <laughs> He's hitting that. Coming off the screen, Ernie. They are tough to stop. Connell is not a man that they look to score a great deal, but he has 13 in this game, and he is shot beautifully, 6 of 8. They lob it low to Baczynski, and he lays it in as they go over the top. of will do it as well. Excuse me, McConnell. Fifty-five, twenty-five count. Pitts is in along with McConnell, and now Gabe York. McConnell, number one in the Pac-12 this year in assist-to-turnover ratio. And one of the reasons that Arizona only turns it over an average of 10 a game. And at this pace, they would set a club record, a school record, for fewest turnovers committed per ball game. The pass to Tarzewski is denied and tipped out of bounds. Now, they run the exact same pick-and-roll play as Utah, and there is no help up top. And that's the difference in the play. Three to shoot. Gordon slips the screen and a foul as he goes into the and he releases. He missed that one. Onwas the other way goes right at the body of Gordon. Laid it up. No. Baczynski the rebound. Gordon coming up a 23.8 rebound performance in a loss Saturday against Oregon. We wondered how would Arizona come out in this ball game? What would be their approach? <laughs> they were well, aggressive from the beginning of this game. We talked about them needing to set the tone. I would say they set the tone in a big way. York's three dances off and on Wash with a rebound. You know, again, they're playing for a number one seed. They want to stay in the West so their fans have an easier time. They travel extremely well. They would travel a lot better if they were sitting in the West. And more importantly, that student body being able to get in their cars and drive it's going to be huge because they could own that building here in Anaheim if they have an opportunity to stay here in the Western Park. Gordon knocks down a deep, Jimmy. And, of course, if you stick around near home, it increases your chances dramatically of winning a national title. Arizona did it in 1997, led by Miles Simon, the coach, Lute Olson. They beat Kentucky in overtime. Here's right with it, 19 to shoot inside of Baczynski. Laid it in with a left hand. And Utah continues to play hard. That's not been an issue. Arizona's defense has been. 58-27 the score. 7-09 to go in the ballgame. Mays the cut. Off balance hopper, and even the bankers are going in. You notice this game obviously is completely out of reach. There's another game behind it. There's seven minutes to go. But there's an awful lot of red in this building. People do not leave when you see this team play because they know something spectacular is a dribble or a pass away from happening. How about a big guy, 6'9", rebounding, ripping, running, distributing on the bounce to Mays. That's Aaron Gordon. He does that. They become a very entertaining basketball bill. Oh, my goodness. Two seven-footers in the house. <laughs> my goodness. And their dad, off to mom and dad, huh? And their dad was here, and he is a rather large individual himself. 624 remaining in this one. Utah basketball. Taylor and Wright. And a nice little roll to the hole there. Kovicevic 
Kovicevic with the bucket. Arizona now with Mays. On the court check screen, got in deep, ball jabbed away. Hannah Lentz after it, digs it away, and Utah will call it. The pressure, the hype that these players are under coming out of high school to come into this environment and have all the hype at Arizona and handle it for a young man to handle and be so poised is outstanding. Yeah, that's all you heard when, of course, Gordon was recruited and signed by Arizona. When he first got to camp, that's all you heard out of the Arizona camp. This kid has an incredible motor, great work ethic, comes early, stays late, and the rest of the team feeds off of the energy. You're talking about a freshman. Taylor, the step back, it's off, and Jordan Mays with the recovery. Hollis Jefferson back in the lineup. Elliott Pitts, 5.15 left, handling to Korchek up top. Hollis Jefferson raising, a flat shot is off, and the rebound recovered by Utah. Here's DeLon Wright. Lentz the step back. Uh-uh. And up at the rim was Hollis Jefferson to pin it and bring it down. Wow. Trying to shake. With the left hand to the right side, stepping, batting, he floats it up and in. That's a terrific end-to-end -end move, two-series move by Hollis Jefferson. That's defense to offense in a hurry. Boy, I'll tell you. <laughs> Remember we talked about that feeding frenzy? Utah held in this game to 22% shooting. Well, what's wrong for them, I thought they turned the ball over way too much in the first half, and they did not stay connected or attached to Arizona with their scoring and they gave Arizona too many easy baskets and that was one of the things we talked about they could not get and here's a great example right here with Jefferson getting the easy basket that will drive right to the hole 